Joe Strawberry, of course, part of those great rivalries with the Mets and St. Louis, and he says hello here on a busy show. Daryl, long time, always a pleasure. How are you today, Pat? Okay? I'm doing great. Uh, good to hear your voice. Things going right. well? Yeah, things are good, Daryl. It's good to have you with us here. 85, big three-game series in St. Louis late in the year. You're trying to catch the Cardinals. You get up there in the extra innings off. Ken Daly hit the ball nine miles. Let's talk about that for a sec. Go ahead. Let me hear. Well, that was just, just part of who we was. We were the home run hitting team. But you know, that, that Cardinal was a very exciting um, team with speed. Uh, they would have a track meet out there, have you running all over the place at Bush Stadium because the ballpark was so big and it was AstroTurf. And, you know, they were a different type of team. And we were a team that uh, hit big home runs. And Ken Daly hung me a breaking ball. It was a great game. It was a one nothing shutout. You know, uh, I believe it was Tudor and uh, – Darling, I think. I'm not yes, sure it was. I think it was. Yes. I, I think it was. Darling threw a, a phenomenal game, you know, to keep us in that ball game. And he came in late to face me in the ball game, hung a breaking ball, and I hit it off the clock to St. Louis. And, you know, they really didn't like us. They called us a bunch of pond scums, you know, because they didn't like us and we didn't like them, the Cardinals. And always going to Bush and everybody around the stadium went red. And I'll tell you, too, that was a great race. But people, you know, they kind of forget about how good that race was. Mets won 98 games. They got knocked out in the second, the last game of the year. I thought that 90, the 85 season, Daryl, kind of set you up for that great start in 86. You began right away against the Cardinals at Shea. You buried them there and never looked back. And almost a continuation of the great finish in 85, starting in 86 against the same team. Let me hear your thoughts on no that. Question. Go ahead. No question. Uh, you know, after, after losing in 85 and coming to spring training and our first meeting in spring training, Davies didn't have much to say. He just said, we're going to win it all. And we just kind of looked around at each other and thought, we're going to win it all. You know, we have all the pieces together, stay healthy, uh, play well, play as a group, uh, and stay together as brothers. And that's what we did in 86, no matter if it was good, bad, and different. You know, we stayed together, and, and that's what brought us to the place of being champions. Because it wasn't easy. You know, we had to get through the Astros, and we stayed together, and we didn't point fingers we looked around and, and we helped each other and picked each other up and you know teams that become great they pick each other up and those met teams the years I was playing yeah we were great we should have won more of course but we didn't yeah should have no I no question but you got the one and of course Gary Carter got you started there in 86 you should have beaten the Cardinals in 87 too Daryl what's your thoughts on the Pendleton home run late in the year there at Shea when the Mets were chasing them down and he hit the ball out of the ballpark and straight away center field. Let me hear your thoughts on that. Off oh, Roger McDowell, well, I believe it was. Let me hear your thoughts on yeah, that. Yeah, he hit a sinker ball pitcher, Roger McDowell. And that, that would, you would never think Pendleton could hit a ball straight away center uh, that would go out of the ballpark at Shea Stadium, but it did. And uh, that year the Cardinals got us, but 87, we lost our rotation. Most of our pitchers ended up with injuries during the course of that year. It wouldn't have been close if our pitching staff was there to hold us the whole year, but we didn't really have that. And I think uh, the Cardinals ended up beating us that year with, with that big home run, that heartbreaking home run off of for what Terry Pimpleton hit off of McDowell. You, you never forget those kind of things because I could just see that ball going out of center field and I couldn't believe it. I really wanted to check his back because Whitey was always checking Hojo back. <laughs> Excellent point. Straight as a Friday night game at uh, Shea. I remember it well. And don't forget, of course, um, uh, in that year, Doc Gooden didn't start the year until about June, so you didn't have him, and that's what Daryl means there as far as the uh, pitchers not being all there. Daryl, how about you? Boy, such a great career in the 80s. Let's do the Mets for a second. Do you feel the Cardinals only won one, too? So let's put that on. Uh, I mean, uh, they only won one championship. People think they won a lot more than they won one. The Mets only won one. Do you think that Mets team, in your eyes, really a uh, lot of unfinished business with that group? only winning one World Series title there in a group of the 80s. Let me hear your take on that. Yeah, I think, yeah, it was some unfinished business. I mean, we, we were so great. Uh, we, we were – that team back in that decade was, was untouchable. Nobody could really beat us. We beat ourselves, you know, most of the time. And uh, I, I think when you look at baseball today, if we'd have had a chance to have a wild card, we would have been in the wild card every year because we were finished in second place in our division with 95 wins. So uh, I just think we uh, – didn't really complete what we started I'm from that 86 because 87 we came back and had that hard break. Then 88 we ended up losing to the Dodgers. You know, 88 was our year. We were we, we were a much better team uh, in 88 than 86 all the way around. But the 86 team had this great character, great gut. You know, guys never giving up. I, I think 88 team was great, 
uh, but I didn't, I didn't think it had the, had the passion of the 86 team. Uh, we should have went on and beat that Dodger team, and we should have won on playing against – in the World Series against that Oakland team, because that's what the matchup, what everybody was hoping was going to be. But that Dodger team was so hot, they go in, they beat us, and they go in to sweep Oakland. So it worked out the way it's supposed to work out, I guess. It's just yeah, 100 percent. You're right there. Everybody thought Mets and A's are there in '88. Right, let's do a couple of home runs. We just saw a little snippet of one that broke the bulb out there on the scoreboard of Xavier Hernandez. What do you remember about that one? Go ahead. Well, I, I think he just kept trying to, you know, trying to throw a fastball by me. It, it was just impossible. It was, wasn't going to never happen. It, it's just a fastball. I think a lot of times people think because guys, you know, got a good fastball, they can get them by you. It doesn't matter how hard you throw it's the fastball. You, if you don't, if you never mix your pitches up, you know, I'm going to crush a fastball because anybody should be able to hit a fastball when they see it release out of the pitcher hand. All right, the home run opening day in Montreal at the old Olympic Stadium. I don't remember who was against. But yeah, the, 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 Randy what a, St. Clair. Oh, it was Randy St. Clair. Okay, boy, what a home run you hit that day. Talk about that home run on opening day there. It was 88, 89. Tell me about that home run. Go ahead. Yeah, that was that was a great opening day. I hit two home runs that day, but that second one was you know, off the top of the roof at, at, at Olympic Stadium. And I remember the umpire, I think it was Dutch. He was the umpire. He was, he was just looking up there. And as I was running around second, I was like, what? Tell me what it is. He just kept looking up top and looking back at me. Then he eventually said, it's a home run. And, and come to know that that was one of the greatest home runs I've probably ever hit. You know, that one and that one in St. Louis off the clock and that one off of Nolan Ryan in the playoffs. That, that really got us back in the ball game to beat him in, in that series. And that, those, those kind of things I always remember as a hitter. You never forget those. Yeah, game five there at Shea. I know I remember one against the Phillies, Daryl. It was in the first inning. I remember I ran back from work to see the at-bat. I think you hit it right field over both bullpens early on against the Phillies, probably a little later there as a Met, maybe 89. You remember that home run you hit against the Phillies or no? Um, I don't remember. I mean, I know I hit a lot of home runs at Shea Stadium. I know Shea Stadium was home cooking for me. I know I love playing in front, in front of home fans. I love the fact that I could be booed at times when I sucked because it made me believe in myself to be better with the fans. And it was just a great way of playing baseball. And, you know, I always say that biggest mistake was I, when I left New York and the Mets and, and the fans, you know, what, what it was really like because I went to L.A. And, you know, the fans were different. They were kind of laid back. They come late, leave early. So I, I was always used to fans yelling at you in New York. So it all, I was always – uh, looking to be thriving, you know, playing in New York because of, uh, of the fans. It had had great memories that day, so I hit so many home runs there because of because of the fans. Well, listen, uh, uh, we always thought Cashin was made a mistake. Uh, I was on radio at the time. I always thought uh, that was a mistake in the long run for you. I know there was always a little love hate, but you were perfect for the Big Apple. And I sounds like that you feel looking back on that great career, that's one you like to have back. You would have liked to have stayed with the Mets, right? Yeah, I would like to have that back. If I could do it all over again, I would stay in New York, and I, I would continue to play in New York City. Daryl, it's great to see you. Uh, it's always the always are a good guy and or a tremendous hitter, but a lot of fun in New York. Good job. Thanks very much. Thanks for coming on today. All right. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. 